What is up YouTube, it's Bing again, and today I have something that I personally have been wanting for a very long time. The Microsoft, oh, oops, wrong thing. The Microsoft, oh, oops, wrong thing. That's for next week, right there. Hopefully you're as excited as I am because we're gonna be doing an unboxing and review of Microsoft's new Surface Go, which we'll be diving into right after our intro. Hit it. The very best tech products aren't born overnight. It takes many iterations just to get it right. Hey, that rhymes. Yo, the surface seems tight and the price is all right. Got a keyboard and graphite and 64 gigabytes. If you want to play Fortnite, then you better look out. For those that don't know its history, the Surface Go is actually the fourth iteration of Microsoft's portable Surface line. Not to be confused with the Surface Pro series, the product line was revived after going on a hiatus due to disappointing sales of the Go's predecessor, the Surface 3. There were many reasons for lackluster sales, and it could be a range from anything like poor marketing, bad pricing, or just being a piece of garbage overall. So let's see if the Surface Go hits the mark this time. It's just in time for back to school, and with a price tag of $529 Canadian for the base model, the Surface Go can really put a dent in your wallet if you go for the top of the line version in addition to buying the keyboard and the pen. With the high-end model and the accessories, it actually comes out to over $900. Keep in mind, this is before tax. You can find the specifications in the description down below, but the two versions available come in either 64 or 128 gigs of storage. In either case, like the rest of the Surface Pro lineup, the computer, keyboard, and pen are all sold separately. The packaging is, again, like the Pro lineup, very well done as expected of a premium product. In the box, we can find the Surface Go, the charger, as well as instructions for how to get started. Being a fan of the Surface line since the original that ran Windows RT, I am actually very pleasantly surprised at how well constructed the Go looks and feels. On the computer itself, you can see that it has one USB-C port along with a 3.5mm headphone jack, a port for power, a type cover connector, as well as a micro SD XC card reader behind the kickstand. The resolution is definitely unique with its 1800 by 1200 pixel density. In fact, everything on this screen looks phenomenal. Aside from the computer itself, the type cover keyboard that is sold separately is a must buy. At the end of the day, while Windows 10 is a great computer operating system, it was never designed with the intention of being a full-fledged tablet OS. So as a result, the best way to navigate and use the Surface Go is with a keyboard and trackpad. Thankfully, the type cover continues to get better and better with each Surface iteration. It really does complete the Surface Go, and I can't imagine anyone skipping out on buying it. We decided to choose the non-Alcantara fabric version for $130, but from what we hear, it is actually worth spending the extra $40 due to how nice it feels on the palms. While the keyboard is probably the best I've ever used on a 10-inch computer, it still feels a little cramped due to the form factor. And while overall it does feel nice to type on, you won't want to spend hours on end typing up documents on it. The plus side is that the trackpad is quite large given the computer's size and is actually very pleasant to use. In terms of real world use, the performance of the Surface Go unfortunately doesn't match its build quality, which makes it hard to justify the price point that it occupies. Windows 10 was never meant to be used on a 10 inch screen. Due to the computer's size, icons and text by default are set to be 150% larger which means that you'll occasionally see blurry icons and text, especially if you plan to install non-Windows Store applications. When using the computer in portrait mode, some apps just outright don't support it well, and may not even actually resize itself to fit. Light usage such as internet browsing, watching videos, and checking emails run well, but for us that's kind of like giving points to a car that can move forward and backwards while being able to turn. My point is, Every mobile computer should be doing those things well in 2018. When it comes to slightly more intense tasks, the Surface Go will start to struggle. Using Photoshop and Lightroom or its alternatives is possible, but it's also a frustrating experience as the processor simply is not meant to perform well with heavy use. Even mobile focused games found on the Microsoft App Store are kind of hit and miss. Some run good and some not so well. And while we didn't do a full exhaustive test on what we can or can't run, it's really disheartening when even games like Candy Crush force closes on a frequent basis. You know what, they should call it Candy Crash. <laughs> it's worth noting that 4K videos are playable and that the built-in speakers are actually quite good for a computer of this size. 
So it's not all bad. Keep in mind that the device ships with Windows 10 S enabled. If you wish to install non-Windows Store applications, you must switch it into Pro Mode. The process of which isn't as intuitive as it can be. But thankfully, it will not cost you any extra money to switch to full Windows. The Surface Go has certainly ticked off quite a few boxes in terms of what makes a great mobile computer with its combination of size and great build quality. But it kind of suffers when we talk about performance. Even though it can run a full version of Windows, the reality is, in terms of capability, it is not so much different than a Chromebook most of which are at least half the price of the Surface Go, and they actually include a keyboard. At the end of the day, buying a Surface Go only makes sense if you're looking for a secondary computer for absolute portability. I would definitely recommend this if you are a business user or a student looking for a productivity machine that is similar to the Surface Pro line. It's a good jack of all trades, but master of none kind of device. If you're looking for a laptop, there are much better and cheaper options running either Windows or Chrome OS. If you're looking for a tablet, Apple and even Android offer a better experience while keeping your wallet happy. I can see fans of the Surface Pro wanting this who just don't need the horsepower and want something smaller and lighter. Well that's it for our review of the Surface Go. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you never want to miss our content. Consider becoming a patron using the link to our Patreon page in the description below so we can continually improve our content. Let us know what you think of the Surface Go in the comments section. Thanks for watching, Big out.